Good afternoon. Everyone warm enough? I don't want to be warmer. It was minus four the other day and I thought, wow, this is great weather after having to endure some of the colder weather, right? Let's say a word of prayer before we look into God's word. Father, we thank you for your precious word and we pray, Lord, that you would speak to us this afternoon and help us, Lord, to grow in these disciplines, Lord, um, as we be good stewards of uh, our time and resources. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you have the original file? Do you have the original file that I sent you? Because I think the formatting is all off. Oh. Yeah, I think. Okay, we'll just, we'll do, make do with this. So, if you have the original file, Andrew, can you just switch over to the original file? Um, as they do that, let me just, um, share with you what, I, what uh, the Lord put on my heart as this is Stewardship Month to share with you regarding the personal disciplines in the spiritual life. Now, today will be part one. A couple weeks from now will be part two. And so in this part, I want to just uh, focus and talk a little bit about um, personal disciplines that deal with the Word of God and with prayer. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, it says, Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So um, it's vital for us to be able to, to grow in the grace of God, to be able to um, receive God's grace and not just stay stand still in our spiritual life, but to grow and increase in our spiritual life. So spiritual disciplines are practices found in Scripture that promote spiritual growth. Um, they are habits of devotion that have been practiced by believers since biblical times. So this, mo- this afternoon, I'm just going to do a little bit of teaching for you so that we can understand some of these practices. Now, I'm going to cover a lot of different things, but I want you to be able to go home today with at least the idea, the thought, or the dedication to say, I'm going to try one of these, right? Or I'm going to try two of these. Not thinking you're going to do everything, but to try to intentionally, especially in 2018, to intentionally decide, let me try one of these things. Let me try to do, uh, do this and make it a discipline in our lives. So these are our, our practices or activities that we do. Uh, they're not just thoughts or attitudes. Uh, they're ways of knowing and experiencing God and for growing in Christ-likeness. Okay? Um, these are the means and methods, but the end goal is Christ-likeness. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 4, um, let me just go again. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 says, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, right? Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. So it takes a work on our part to discipline ourselves, right? for the purpose of godliness. Just in the same way, we might discipline ourselves to go to work in the morning or um, go to school and do certain things in our lives, discipline ourselves to eat properly, things like that. We need to discipline ourselves for the purpose of godliness. Now, the NIV puts it like this. Train yourself to be godly, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So train yourself to be godly. Physical training has some value, but godliness has value for all things, right? So what I'd like to, uh, before we get into the two, two major uh, topics, what I'd like us to see is the, the difference between our effort in Christ-likeness versus true Christ-likeness, okay? Our effort in Christ-likeness versus true Christ-likeness. For example... I can be a person that's prone to anger, and I can tell myself, I'm not going to get angry, 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 and then somebody does something to me, and what happens? I get angry, right? And as much as I want to tell myself, I'm not going to get angry, I'm not going to get angry, and things like that, but I still will get angry. So it's an effort in Christ's likeness to try to stop from getting angry, the difference between that and true Christ-likeness is that when somebody does something to us, we don't get angry. How do we come to that place? 
And that's where these spiritual disciplines can work in our life to affect Christ-likeness within us so that our natural response and reaction would be that of peace and not of anger, right? Can you see the difference? I can purpose in myself saying, I'm not going to get angry, I'm not going to get angry, but something happens and I get angry. But as we practice these spiritual disciplines and train ourselves, as we read here, train ourselves towards godliness, these spiritual disciplines working in our lives will affect in us Christ-likeness so that the natural response will be peace and not anger. It's a transformation of the inner man. It's a work of God's grace that He does in our lives in order to change us from glory to glory into the very image and character and likeness of Christ. And so that's why these spiritual disciplines are important. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10, it says, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. No, I work harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. So Paul says here, yes, he was training himself to godliness. He was working. He was doing that. But at the end, of course, he was still acknowledging and saying it is God's grace. And we always have to realize that. It's not what we can do, but it's God's grace working in us. But at the same time, we need to exercise ourselves towards godliness. It's part of good stewardship, good stewardship of of our time, good stewardship of, of, uh, of what we do in the Christian life. The greatest sermon ever preached from Matthew, chapter, uh, Matthew chapters 5 to 8, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spoke about all these amazing things. Love your enemies. Turn the other cheek when someone hits you. Walk the extra mile when someone asks you to go with them. Give your coat as well to the person who asks for your sweater. Bless those who persecute you. How in the world are we supposed to do these things? Naturally, these things are not becoming to us. We will do the opposite of these things. If someone says something to us, we're going to slap them back. If somebody asks us to, 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 for, our, for our coat, we'll say, no, 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 I'm not going to give you anything. The natural human response and tendency is that, to be selfish. So how is our character changed? How are we transformed into true Christ-likeness? So that we can do what it says here in Matthew chapter 5 and 8. The effort in Christ-likeness will be to say, oh, I don't want to give my jacket, but oh, the Bible says so, so here, take it. Right? The effort in Christ-likeness is that when someone does something bad to us, we'll say, I know I need to bless them, fine, I'll bless them. But it's not coming from the heart. It's an effort in Christ-likeness versus true Christ-likeness. So how do we come to that place of true Christ-likeness? We exercise ourselves towards godliness, right? Right? Just as much as I want to say, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, think, oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to maybe go to the gym. I'm thinking, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to go to the gym, but I actually have to go there if I want to see the effect in my life, right? I can't just be thinking about going to the gym and say, oh, it's been a week, how come, how come you know, I'm still the same? Well, I haven't gone to the gym, I haven't exercised myself. And in the same way, if we want our character to be changed, if we want our lives to be changed, exercise ourselves towards godliness. We can't do it on our own effort, right? But by God's grace, God is able to help us. And you see in in the New Testament, we see somebody like Stephen. When he was about to be stoned, what did he say? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. How was Stephen able to say something like that? It was a Christ-like response because that's the same thing we heard from Jesus on the cross when he was being crucified. He said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. How was Stephen able to give a sincere, true, Christ-like response? I believe because he he had exercised himself towards godliness. So these spiritual disciplines that we practice on a daily basis starts to transform our lives little by little into the image of Christ. So that when we get angry, our natural reaction will be peace. Our natural reaction will be forgiveness. Do you think when Jesus was on the cross, he was debating, should I forgive them? Should I not forgive them? Should I forgive them? Should I not forgive them? Okay, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. No. There was no debate there. It was the natural reaction for Jesus to say, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing, right? And so we have to realize that. 
in Acts chapter 3. And, and what we have to realize is that as we go about in our daily duties, as we go about doing these natural things, what's actually going to happen is that God will start doing the supernatural in our lives as we live in the natural. In Acts chapter 3, we read about Peter and John. What were they doing? They were on their way to the temple. Just a natural thing, a normal thing. They were on their way to the temple. They were doing this as a natural part of their life, right? It wasn't something new to them. It was part of their discipline to go to the house of God. It was part of their discipline to go and worship in the temple. And as they were coming to the temple, what did they do? They saw a lame man. They said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. In their natural working of life, in the natural things that they were doing, in their, in their disciplines of life, God did something supernatural. Right? We read about Daniel. Daniel had a disciplined life of prayer, and he prayed three times in the day. Right? And there was an order given by the king that everyone had to pray to, the, to, the, to that idol, not to any other god. But Daniel didn't change his discipline. Daniel continued to keep that discipline. And in continuing to keep that discipline, we see this miracle happen of how he was saved from the lion's den. Out of the ordinary of these spiritual disciplines comes something extraordinary. Out of the ordinary of these spiritual dis disciplines comes something supernatural. And that's Christ-likeness. These are avenues of grace in our lives. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview. We can't get into all of the details, but I'd like to recommend to you two books. One is by a person by the name of Dallas Willard, Spirit of the Disciplines. And another book is by the name of a man named Richard Foster, Celebration of Discipline. And so if you want to dig more into this or if you want to study a little bit more, a lot of my information I've gotten from these, from these two men, Dallas Willard and Richard Foster, in understanding what these disciplines are and growing towards these disciplines in order to grow towards Christ-likeness. Again, the goal is Christ-likeness. The goal is the natural response should be Christ-likeness. When someone does something bad to us, the natural response should be forgiveness. It shouldn't be that we just say, oh, I should, should I forgive? Should I not forgive? Oh, and grudgingly we forgive. That's an effort on our part in Christ-likeness. We are trying to be Christ-like. We are trying to forgive. We're trying to be kind. We're trying to show grace. We're trying to go the extra mile. It's an effort in Christ-likeness. It's an effort in being like Christ. But what God wants to do in our life is transform our inner man, transform our being, so that the natural response will be Christ-likeness. Just like Stephen, his natural response was, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Let that, wouldn't you love that to be your natural response? Wouldn't you love that to be your immediate response? That Christ-likeness would be the natural response in our life. So, two main things that we're going to look at. One is prayer and Bible reading. So first one, prayer. Okay? Now, Prayer is a living interact interactive relationship with God. It's conversing. It's communicating with God. As we pray at the beginning of the day, prayer should flow in everything that we're doing and with everyone that we're meeting, right? Um, it, is sort, it's sort, it is sort of at two levels, right? Um, we're going about doing our work, but there is a spirit of prayer within us, right? And we pray without ceasing, um, about Jonathan Edwards that was written, he began the day with private prayers, followed by family prayers, by candle night in the winter. Each meal was accompanied by household devotions, and at the end of each day, Sarah, his wife, joined him in his study for prayers. Jonathan kept, kept secret the rest of his daily devotional routine, following Jesus' command to pray in secret. Throughout the day, his goal was to remain constantly with a sense of living in the presence of God. As difficult as that might be, often he added secret days of fasting and additional prayers. See, this had become a routine in his life, right? It had become something normal and natural that he was doing. And so for us as well, these spiritual disciplines must become a routine, must become a rhythm in our lives. We have to uh, do these things on a, on, on a daily basis in order for it to be, become part of, part of our life and for us to exercise ourselves towards 
godliness. Right? That's the key. Exercise ourselves towards godliness. So prayer needs to be consistent. Right? There needs to be some consistency. First Thessalonians 5 verse 17 says, Pray continually. For these disciplines to work, it must be done consistently in our life. Prayer needs to be part of our daily life. When we get up in the morning, during the day, and at night, pick a time and be consistent in it. Pick a place and be consistent with it. Let that be the foundation and then grow from there. Right? Prayer needs to have some consistency. Right? If you, if you say, well, I'm going to go to the gym once a year, right? and then after that you're scratching your head wondering, how come this is not having any effect on me? Right? Well, you are not exercising yourself properly. There needs to be some sort of consistency. And the same thing with prayer, drawing closer to the Lord, letting that discipline of prayer come in our lives. Another thing about prayer is that it should be an aspect of worship, of adoration, of thanksgiving to God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20 says, Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to, your, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and, sp- and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this aspect of prayer must be worship. I don't know about you, but there's been times when I've been in my room or even in my car and where prayer has been just Heaven on earth. I I felt like heaven has come down, right? More often than not, it's in my car, right? And I feel this this aspect of worship where I'm praying and asking the Lord and I feel God uh, God come down, heaven come down. Now, there are times that prayer is petitionary, which is the very basis of prayer, but there's other times when prayer needs to be worship towards God. Again, this needs to be a discipline in our lives. It's not something that we just, you know, do every now and then. If we do it every now and then, then we're scratching our heads and wondering, how come I'm praying and nothing's happening in my life? Well, if prayer is just like the, you know, is like the Big Mac that you pick up at McDonald's every now and then whenever you're hungry and you want something different, then we shouldn't be surprised if it's not doing anything in our lives. There has to be some consistency. There has to be, some, um, there has to be uh, some sort of ordered plan there. There has to be a discipline. There has to be an exercise towards godliness in our lives. I know some of these things are going to be a little bit hard, so I'm going to just keep going, right? So when you look at the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, there's an aspect of worship that's there at the beginning, even before the, the, the petition is made. You can see worship there. Another aspect of prayer is fasting. I know we don't like to hear about this, but again, these are spiritual disciplines that if we exercise ourselves towards godliness, we need to have this as a rhythm in our life. This has to be part of our life of what we do in prayer. Fasting is, a, is an exceptional measure designed to channel and express our desire for God and, for, and, uh, and our holy discontent in a fallen world, right? Fasting is the voluntary denial of an otherwise normal function, for the sake of intense spiritual activity. It's important that we have this, not just as something that's a happenstance or something that we do oh, every just now and then. No, but there has to be a rhythm in our life for fasting as a, as a spiritual discipline, as a spiritual aspect of prayer in our lives. Now, fasting can, be, can, can take many different forms. The most common of that is, of course, food. We can fast from a variety of, of different foods. There's a different, different types of uh, fasting as well. You can have a complete fast, or you can fast from certain foods, or with a variety of lengths as well. Um, Martin Lloyd-Jones said, Fasting should really be made to include abstinence from anything which is legitimate, in and of itself for the sake of some special spiritual purpose. So anything that's legitimate to fast from it or to stop from it for the sake of some special spiritual purpose. So we could fast from our phone because nowadays many times our phone ends up controlling us as well, right? We can fast from our phone. We can fast from uh, the computer or sports or TV or the internet or things that we like. So many different things that we could fast from in order for intense spiritual activity, right? Again, this is not just something that we do, you know, half-heartedly. This needs to be a rhythm in our life. If we really want, and my, my challenge to each one of us here, including myself, if we really want to see God moving and changing us, God moving and changing our church, 
God moving and changing the world through us, then we'll take time to practice some of these spiritual disciplines. We can't just say, I want this, I want this, and then not work towards it, right? You can't say, I want to be the CEO of this big company, but then you don't go to school to get your MBA or to educate yourself or, or do this or that in order to, so that you could take that type of uh, a role on. You can't just say, well, I want to be a lawyer, but I'm not going to go to school for it. No, there's certain things that you need to do. In our spiritual lives, dear people of God, there are certain spiritual practices that are essential, that are necessary, that help us in our spiritual growth. And if we neglect them, we shouldn't be surprised when we're not growing spiritually. Are you all with me? We shouldn't be surprised. Oh, I'm just the same. We, we moan and groan. Oh, I'm just the same. I'm always the same. Yeah, well, you're not working at it. You're not taking diligent time and effort to be able to say, yes, I'm spending time in these spiritual disciplines so that Christ can be formed in me. These are simple things. These are not complicated things to do. But again, there needs to be a rhythm in our life. There needs to be some consistency in our life. There needs to be some of these things practiced in our life. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Right? We need to wait on God's word. And there's so many things uh, that can be accomplished in, uh, in fasting and in prayer. Uh, deeper prayer, seeking counsel from God. Uh, sometimes we can fast in times of grief. Uh, we can fast for expressing repentance, for humbling ourselves before God, overcoming temptation, seeking deliverance, expressing love for God. All of these things are legitimate reasons to enter in, enter in to a fast, Right? But it's finally about finding pleasure in God. So we, 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 we voluntarily push aside something in order to find pleasure in God, right? Find pleasure in his word. Find God as our sustenance. It, also, it, it teaches us temperance, teaches us self-control, teaches us moderation, teaches us restraint in everything that we do. Jesus taught about fasting on the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, verse 16 to 18. At one time, some of the disciples, some uh, other uh, people came and asked Jesus, Jesus, why don't your disciples fast? And Jesus said, well, why should they fast when I am with them? But there'll come a time when I am taken and then they will feast. No, then they will fast. That's the time we're living in right now. I want to encourage all of us in these spiritual disciplines, consistency in prayer, worship in prayer, fasting in prayer. These are important things. Hearing from God. Prayer should not just be a, two, uh, a one-way street, but it needs to be a, a two-way street, right? We need to spend time listening to the voice of the Lord, right? And the more that we listen in silence and solitude, we'll talk a little bit of silence and solitude in two weeks' time when we look at some personal um, disciplines as well. We need to spend time in the Word of God. John 10 and verse uh, 27 says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they... Follow me. So that's prayer. Number two, the second thing. I only have two things today, right? <laughs> the second thing is the Word of God, right? The Word of God. You know, there's a story, I don't know if I've told the story here or not, but there's a story of a man who wanted to quit church because he couldn't remember anything in the sermon, right? Maybe you're like that today. You're going to leave today and wonder, what did I listen to? What did I hear? I can't. How many here remember the sermon from last Sunday? Maybe, right? You're thinking, what? What was the message last Sunday about? Right? So there was a man, he wanted to quit church because he couldn't remember the sermon. Right? And uh, he couldn't remember anything. He's like, what's the point of me going to church? I come to church, I listen to the sermon. Right? And then I go and I can't remember anything of what was shared. So then the pastor told him, you know, I've been married for many, many years. And my wife, she cooks meals for me every single day. But you know what? I can hardly remember what she's made for all of these decades that we've been married together. But one thing I know is that those meals have nourished me, right? Those meals have nourished me. And that's the same thing with the Word of God. There's some times when we might not be able to remember what the sermon is. We might not remember what we've read. But when God sends His Word at that time, that is our sustenance. At that time, that is our help in time of need. And at that time is the time also to respond, make a commitment, make a dedication to be a doer of the Word of God. So when we talk about the Word of God, what are we talking about? One thing is daily reading. I can't emphasize to you 
how important it is to read the Word of God on a daily basis. I'm not talking about reading the Word of God once a week. I'm not talking about reading the Word of God once a month. I'm not talking about reading the Word of God when we come to church and then Pastor Roger puts it up on the, on the screen and we do a responsive reading. That's not enough. How many here you only eat once a week? Nobody. Daily reading of the Word of God is the sustenance for our inner man. I wonder how many of us, if, if the Lord were to allow us to look into our, our spiritual life and look into our spirit, how many of us, our spirits will be like a thin, hungry person? Like star- starving, malnourished. Sadly, many times we're like that spiritually and we just go on and on and on. But we need to spend time in the Word of God on a daily basis. Psalm 119 And verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, there's so many different ways that we can read the Bible. You can start from the beginning and go to the end, right? I'd probably recommend if you've never read through the whole Bible, start from the New Testament, right? Nowadays, we have these Bible apps. I'm actually with a group of people, and we're reading through the Bible. We start at the beginning of the year. We're reading through the Bible for the whole year. And so we can check on each other and say, Oh, you didn't do your reading. Right? And you can see, and then you can also make a comment and say what God spoke to you from that reading as well. It's really good technology, wonderful, right, these days. And so you could do that in order to read the Word of God on a daily basis, right? Again, it's something that you need to do on a daily basis. There needs to be a rhythm in our lives, right? Is it something normal for you just to skip eating altogether one day? No. Your stomach will tell you, hello, you haven't eaten yet, I need some food, Right? In the same way, our spirit should hunger for that. Another aspect of the Word of God is meditation. This is important as well. Don Whitney, uh, Don Whitney said, Deep thinking on the truths and spiritual realities revealed in Scripture for the purposes of understanding, application, and prayer. This is what meditation is. Deep thinking on the truths and spiritual realities revealed in Scripture for the purpose of understanding, application, and prayer. Hearing God's voice and obeying His Word. It's about hearing and obeying, right? Now, this is fundamentally different from what uh, other religious systems or New Age uh, methods are, which is about emptying yourself in meditation. This is not about emptying yourself. This is about filling yourself with the Word of God filling our minds with biblical and theological substance, and then digesting it, right? We read that uh, Psalm 1, we already read today, Psalm 1 in verse, um, verse 2 says, whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. I just talked about reading the Bible every day. The psalmist takes it to the next level and he says, I'm not just talking about daily reading. I want you now to meditate on it when? Day and, and night. He's upping the game to two times, right? Joshua 1 verse 8 says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Dear people of God, I'm not purposely trying to be hard on you, but what I want to encourage you with is that many times in our spiritual life, we're going round and round around the same mountain. We look at ourselves and we see no spiritual growth. We look at ourselves and we wonder, why am I still like this after many years when we're not making a diligent, careful, and ordered attempt to exercise ourselves towards godliness? And I want to encourage you in 2018, let us be diligent in these things in prayer. Be diligent in these things in in, in Bible reading. Let it be something that we do on a daily basis. Because after that, we don't want to scratch our heads and wondering, well, why am I still the same angry man that I am? We haven't exercised ourselves towards godliness. We all have faults and failures. I'm not trying to pick on anyone. I'm the, the one that has the most. And that's why I need to exercise myself towards godliness through these spiritual disciplines. Thomas Watson said, the reason we come away so cold from reading the word is because we do not warm ourselves at the fires of meditation. I love this quote. The reason we come away so cold from reading the word is because we do not warm ourselves at the fires of meditation. 
Do we read the Word of God and we just come away cold? Because we're just reading just for the sake of reading? Or do we read and meditate and let our soul be warmed? Right? One thing we did for one of the prayer meetings a, a few months ago was, was something called Lectio Divina, which is a process of reading the Word of God in a very orderly, at, uh, in an orderly format. So you take a portion of Scripture, say it's a psalm or say it's one chapter, and you read it through once. Slowly. We're not rushing through the thing. You read it through nice and slow. And you ask the Lord to speak to you something from that. Let a, let a verse or a word or a phrase jump out. Then you read it again and see how that word or phrase can be applied to your current situation. Then you read it again. And then you can read it again the fourth time as well. It's about meditating on that, thinking about that, letting God fill our heart and mind with His Word so that we can apply it to our daily life. Right? It's about uh, reading some scriptures quietly, slowly, and let the Lord speak to us. Meditate on it. Right. Another thing that's important for us to do is study. Study the Word of God. Right. That studying is not just meant for the pastors that has to study to teach the Word of God. No, we're all required to study the Word of God. Right. We read that verse in um, in. Uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the, the word of truth. Right? So study the word of God. Handle the word of God properly. So read some, if you, if you read a, a portion of scripture, then maybe read some commentaries. Read some books. Right? Nowadays, you can find them online. There's so many different ones that you can read. Find some good ones, though. Right? And read some things to be able to study the Word of God, to inform us about Scripture, inform us about Christian living. All right? It's so important. The result is that God's Word should be motivating us and moving us. You know, we spend so much time doing other things, so much time maybe that's wasted doing other things when we could be productive with our spiritual life and exercise ourselves towards godliness, Right? so that we could be moved and motivated, right? It should saturate every aspect of our being, control the decisions that we make. It should shape our life. It should shape our mind, shape our will, shape our desires, shape our affections, right? It should shape our actions and our reactions. That's why we need the Word of God. We need to study the Word of God. So maybe pick a book of the Bible and read through it, right? And then read other books about that. Study it. Maybe listen to some messages about it. Dig deeper into it right? Journaling is another good thing that you can do with the Word of God. Many times the Psalms are like journal entries. The Psalm is basically writing in his journal the experience that he's going through, right? Uh, journaling is a way of slowing life down for us. We live in such a fast-paced society. We live in a society that we're always on the go, always on the go, so much to do. And sometimes journaling is a way that we can slow down our life, right? And see the hand of God, in the situations of our life daily. It's a way to express our petitions to God. It's a way even to hear from God. And another good thing is that we can record what's happening, happening to us so that we can remember later on to look back and thank God and say, yes, I saw God's hand in this situation. I saw how God delivered me. I saw how God saved me. I saw how God provided for me. I saw how God gave me the victory. And we can reflect back and thank God for His goodness, right? And so this is another way that we could do in order to exercise, another thing we can do to exercise ourselves towards godliness. Again, remember what I said at the beginning. I'm not expecting or thinking, okay, I've got to go back and I've got to do all of these five things for the Word of God and these five things for prayer. I want to just challenge you. Can we just take one thing and do that? Just try one thing, whether it's meditation, whether it's daily reading of the Word of God, whether it's fasting, whether it's journaling, can we just try one thing and do that diligently? Can we try one thing and exercise ourselves towards that so we get better at that, better at that, better at that, and see the impact it will have on your Christian life? I guarantee you, money back guarantee, it will do something for you. I guarantee you, you just pick one of these things. And I'm not saying, okay, daily, daily Bible reading, and then you read the Bible once a week, and then you say, hey, Pastor Daniel, that didn't do anything for me. 
Yeah, well, you didn't do it properly. Do it properly. Do it in a disciplined way. Do it in an orderly way. Do it as you're exercising yourself towards godliness. And when you come to the end of 2018, I guarantee you will see a profound impact on your spiritual life. You'll see Christ-likeness not because of an effort and forcing yourself to be like Jesus, right? We can come to church and put on a smile and say, oh, hi, how are you doing? And then we walk out of the church and yell and scream at everybody we come in contact with. That's forced Christ-likeness in these four walls, but outside we're totally different. Outside is the natural person coming out in every situation and circumstance. But allow ourselves to exercise ourselves towards godliness and let Christ-likeness be formed in us so that our natural reaction would be what Jesus would do. You know, there's that saying, WWJD, what would Jesus do? So what happens? You come to a situation, you stop. What would Jesus do? Okay, well, he would forgive. Oh, he would go the extra mile. He would show kindness. It's a forced Christ-likeness. It's an effort in Christ-likeness. I got to do this, so let me do it. No, that's not what we're looking for. What God is looking for is for the transformation of our character so that there's a true Christ-likeness within us. So that when situations and circumstances arise in our lives, the natural reaction will be Christ-likeness. Do you know anyone like that? Do you know anyone that was not like that but now is like that? Maybe because they've allowed Christ to transform their lives. Maybe they've exercised themselves towards godliness in prayer, in Bible reading. In two weeks' time, we'll look at some of the other disciplines as well. Last one. Maybe you won't like this one. Memorization. Yes, memorizing the Word of God. It does something for you, right? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 says, Let the Word of Christ richly dwell within you. Let all wisdom, with all wisdom, teaching, and in with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Right? What do you think the richly dwell within you means? I don't think it means memorizing Jesus wept. Right? That's a nice short verse to memorize. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Memorize the word of God. And see how Jesus used the word of God to fight against the devil during his time of temptation. Memorizing scripture can help us in so many different ways. As we pray, what should we do? Quote scripture back to the Lord. That's a method of praying by quoting scripture. Say, Lord, your word says this, this, and this. Lord, please do it for my life. And as we memorize the word of God, it enriches us, right? There's some, you know, we're, we're so spoiled here in North America because we have so, much, so many Bibles and so many opportunities. But there's people in other parts of the world that don't have the Bible, and they're memorizing the Word of God. I was reading uh, yesterday about, about one, one young girl who knew that she was going to be captured. I'll probably tell you the story another time. But she knew that she was going to be captured, knew that she was going to go to prison for the sake of Christ. And so in preparation for that, you know what she did? She memorized about 100 chapters of the Bible so that way she'd have something that she could remember while she was in prison because she knew it was inevitable that that was going to happen. And so in memorizing the Word of God, it's so important for our spiritual lives, exercising ourselves towards godliness. So if you want to start here, I'll give you a good way to start. If you want to start, start with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 has 13 verses, okay? One verse a week. Write it on a cue card, stick it on your fridge, stick it on your, on your, in, in your car, right? When you're stopped at the red light, read it over, and then read it over again. When you come back home, read it over and memorize it. In three months, you'll have the whole chapter memorized. Exercise ourselves towards godliness, right? Now, I've given you a lot of things, so I'll end right here. But I just want to encourage you, dear people of God, if we really want to see a change in our own personal lives, if we want to see a change in our families, I read to you about Jonathan Edwards and what he did in devotion in his, in, in his family time. If we really want to see a change in our church, if we want to see a change in this community, if we want to be used of God to change the world, 
let's give ourselves to these disciplines, to exercise ourselves towards godliness and let the image and character of Christ be formed in us. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Daniel, for that practical message that you shared um, with us today. We're going to uh, close the service with a hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life. And normally, um, we sing this hymn just before a message. But, you know, every day, as, as Pastor Daniel has shared with us, we need to open our Bibles and ask God to speak to us from his word, to break the word of life, uh, the bread of life uh, for us. And Jesus is that bread of life. And so we need to experience, because the whole purpose of scripture is to lead us into a relationship with God. And so that can happen to us. So as you think about this song today, just pray that this will be your desire whenever you read the word of God, that you will encounter not just the physical words, but the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Let's stand as we sing, please. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, beyond the sacred page, I seek thee, Lord. My spirit pants for thee, O living word. Bless thou the truth, dear Lord, to me, to me. As thou didst bless the bread by Galilee, then shall all bondage cease, all fetters fall, and I shall find my peace, my all. Thou art the bread of life, O Lord, to me. Thy holy word, the truth that saveth me. Give me to eat and live with thee above. Of thy truth, for thou art love. O oh, send thy spirit, Lord, now unto me, that he may touch my eyes and make me see. Show me the truth revealed within thy word for in thy book revealed I see the Lord let us pray father we thank you for this time that we've been able to spend in your house with your people and we thank you for the message today that encourages us in a life of prayer, study of your word. And we realize that all of this is to help us in our relationship with you, that we would have a dynamic, transforming relationship with you so that others can see that Christ is alive in us. 
And so, Father, help us to do all the things that we can that will make us more like you so that people will say of us as they did of the disciples that they had been, they could see that they had been with Jesus. And, oh God, we pray that that would be said of us as we mingle with family, with friends, with colleagues at work, wherever we go, that they would sense the spirit and love of Christ in our lives and help us to work in, in being more godly in our relationship, that we will have a life of godliness. And we realize that it takes these disciplines to help us to become more like you. So help us to discipline ourselves in these ways that we have heard about today so that we will grow in likeness to you. So thank you for meeting with us. Thank you for speaking to us. And help us now to put into practice that which your spirit has spoken into our lives today. And strengthen us by your grace to carry out the decisions that we made in the service today. We pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. You made it.